So I just watched uh, Apple's uh, presentation today on the new, uh, all the new products they're releasing as of April 2021. And there was one Mac that was listed on there. It was the, uh, the new iMac, 24 uh, inch. And they did like they did with the original iMacs where they had multicolors. And um, uh, I have been uh, looking at the different M1 Macs since they were released originally back in uh, 2001, or sorry, 2020, November. And uh, I've been kind of holding off because I've been looking for uh, a potential replacement for the current iMac that I have now. The one I'm actually recording this video on is, uh, is a 2015 iMac. And so um, I figured what I'd do is before I went out and bought a, uh, a, a, one of these M1 based Macs, I want to do my homework and see, uh, you know, is this something I want to be able to use? As a software engineer, as a developer, uh, there's a lot of specialized tools that we use that um, previously when the M1s were first released, I think most of the like, you know, power user or user, you know, regular user software you used in the M1s probably worked fine either natively as universal apps or under Rosetta. But uh, um, a lot of the tools uh, that, you know, software engineers use uh, wasn't really supported yet. And so uh, for my development purposes, uh, I held off on getting one. But I'm looking at that new iMac, it's looking pretty nice. So I want to do just kind of a quick evaluation of uh, some of the different tools that you might use or that I'm using and is to see where they are as far as uh, support on the M1. So one of the first tools that I use is, you know, whenever I'm setting up a new Mac as an example, the, one of the first things I do is uh, install Homebrew. If you're not familiar with Homebrew, it's a package manager. And they had support initially uh, where you could run Homebrew under Rosetta, but none of the uh, libraries or packages that are part of it uh, were, you know, offered any support other than for Intel-based uh, machines. And so they did do an update here. It looks like I'm back in February where uh, Homebrew is now a native application. Now the caveat being here is that a lot of the libraries and stuff that are, uh, that you'd install or applications you install may run under or have to run under Rosetta because they haven't been uh, recompiled for the, the ARM-based uh, M1 processors. But it's good to see that the, they do have support for that now. Uh, the next thing I'm just going to take a look at is Xcode. So, you know, if you're doing any type of Apple development, if you're building for tvOS, iOS, macOS, uh, or iOS, uh, you know, Xcode's a tool that we typically use for, for doing that. And Xcode, uh, since day one, when they released M1 Max, it's been a universal app, and it's fully supported the uh, Apple Silicon-based processors. So that's not an issue, but uh, it should look a, a lot nicer on the, on the larger screen on the iMac. So uh, that's something to take into account. So Xcode, not a problem. Here's the next one. So if you're doing a mobile development, uh, like my day job, I do uh, iOS and Android development. This has been kind of a bone of contention. So there has been a preview available since last year uh, for running um, uh, Android Studio on, uh, on the M1 Max. And so it's still in a preview state, but if you need to be able to run it, you can. Probably your best bet is to just try to run directly on a device. So if you have an Android device, hook it up to your Mac with, uh, with a USB cable. Uh, that's my preferred way of doing, uh, doing development anyways on, the, uh, uh, on Android and uh, Android Studios to actually do it directly on the device. But uh, they do have preliminary support for that. So if you're doing a lot of Android development, uh, this may be a reason to kind of hold off, but uh, they do have some support. The next big one uh, is Visual Studio Code. So if you're doing web development, this is a very popular tool uh, for doing web development. Um, I've been using it for years now. Uh, I actually, I don't think I could live without Visual Studio Code. Uh, it is a universal Mac binary. So we don't have to worry now. It's, it's set up so that it'll run natively either on x86-based processors or on the new M1 processors. So that is not a problem. Um, 
Next thing I want to take a look at was JetBrains. So if you're doing Java development, uh, and there's a lot of other editors that are based off of uh, JetBrains uh, for doing different types of development, like WebStorm, PyStorm, this sort of thing, uh, they do have support now for the M1 processors. So if you're using JetBrains, uh, you can now use, uh, this, you can run this update and uh, you can, you're now supported on the M1 processor. The next one is Eclipse. This is a tool I haven't used in nearly 20 years, uh, but there's still a lot of people that uh, use this. Um, I believe this will run under Rosetta, uh, but uh, they still, uh, it's an x86 only uh, IDE at this point. So uh, if you're, you know, you live on, uh, live and breathe Eclipse, uh, that might be a reason why you might want to hold off, but it will run under Rosetta. So as far as languages go, um, Python, obviously it's very popular, data science, uh, mathematicians, that sort of thing. Um, and I found this post on Adafruit. Adafruit's known as being kind of a company that sells uh, uh, these little uh, hardware boards and stuff like that for, uh, for doing little uh, personal electronic projects and stuff like that. But obviously this is something they were concerned about because uh, if you're using a Raspberry Pi as an example, you want to be able to run uh, Python. And uh, the M1 processor is supported, uh, according to this post here. So you can run, uh, you can run it. Now the, here, another takeaway, much like uh, Homebrew, uh, there's a lot of libraries and stuff like that that people are probably using to, are used to using pip, like pip install as an example to install. And some of those may be, you know, uh, Intel dependent type libraries and stuff like that. So that's something you're gonna have to research on your own. I don't do a lot of Python development. But the language itself is now natively supported on the uh, supported on the M1 processor. Here's one of my personal favorites. Uh, so I just saw this was just uh, released, I think, like a couple days ago, or uh, maybe just today. Uh, but uh, Node uh, JS, if you're using Node JS as an example, uh, it has been supported under Rosetta, but they have not had a native installer for the M1-based processors. As of version 16 there is now a native uh, processor. I don't know if anybody can read this. I'm gonna to try to blow this up a little bit. So you can see here, there's a Darwin ARM64 now. So that does look like it is supported uh, on the uh, M1 processors. Now, if you need support for an earlier version of Node, uh, and you don't wanna run a Rosetta, you're probably gonna to have to compile from source. But uh, if you're gonna be running from 16 on, uh, it will run and work natively on uh, on the M1 Max. And another popular language for, for doing mathematics and data science is R programming. And uh, this unfortunately uh, uh, is not set up to run on the, uh, uh, on the M1 processor. It looks like um, uh, there's a post here where they're talking about running under Rosetta, but uh, I think the key issue here is that uh, R is actually built with Fortran, and it's built with, I think, Fortran 90. And there's a way you can actually compile um, R where you take your Fortran code and then convert it into C code, and then it will uh, compile into you know, a native application. But uh, uh, I believe that the C support for there, you have to be running uh, Fortran 77, and this is running in an earlier version of, uh, or this is running a newer version version of, or it's built with a, a newer version of Fortran. So uh, R, uh, you have to do some research on that or whether or not you can use that, but it does not look like it's supported yet on, uh, on the M1 processor. Uh, it's possibly maybe running under uh, Rosetta. .NET, so if you're using C Sharp as an example, uh, it's a language I used for well over a decade. Uh, if you're working with one of the preview releases of uh, .NET 6, uh, they do have a native uh, ARM-based installer for, uh, uh, for the M1 Max. Now, if you want to use an earlier version, you can install, um, as an example, the, uh, .NET 5, but uh, you're going to have to run that under Rosetta. But they do have some native support now for the, uh, for the M1 Max. If you're a Java developer, you're in luck. Uh, because uh, OpenJDK, uh, they do have an ARM-based uh, uh, installer for, for running Java on the M1 Max. So if you're doing Java, you're, you're in good shape. 
Golang, this is an interesting one because uh, this is one of those uh, newer languages uh, that's not built with uh, LLVM. Uh, I believe it's just built with uh, GCC. And I think there were some issues there with making sure that GCC had support for uh, uh, for the M1s, Apple Silicon based Macs, but uh, they do have uh, support now for uh, ARM based uh, ARM based uh, Macs. So if you're running the M1 processor, uh, you will be able to run Go. So that's good news if you're a Go developer. Rust. So if you're using Rust as an example, um, uh, as of version 1.23, uh, they support M1 devices. So we're in good shape. If you're a Rust developer, uh, you're fully supported. And that, probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that uh, Rust is actually built with LLVM, which is the same tool that's used to build uh, the compilers that Apple uses. So that's supported. Now, this is a big one. Uh, Docker. So uh, this is something that Apple promised when they first uh, talked about the new uh, Apple Silicon uh, based processors. And when they initially released them, uh, there was not support. There's no way of running Docker on the M1 processors. And as of April 15th, uh, they now they had a preview release prior to this where you could run uh, kind of like a preview release, but they have official support now for Apple Silicon. And the thing that's really cool about this is that you can actually run images that are either AMD 64 or ARM 64. And uh, there's a technology that's available in Docker now where you can kind of create these containers that are set up so that it doesn't matter if it's a uh, AMD 64 based processor or it's a uh, it's an ARM based processor. You can go you can run these images uh, or you can run the containers on uh, multiple different architectures. So that's extremely cool technology. Uh, I'm kind of interested in taking a look at this, playing around with this. Uh, I just installed Docker Desktop. Um, today, uh, so I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, but uh, this is uh, extremely cool. So I'm happy that uh, Docker uh, finally released that. This is, a, this is a big game changer as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Electron, so if you're not familiar with Electron, Electron is a framework for building uh, essentially desktop or applications. Uh, it's based off of Chromium and uh, Node.js. And the idea here is that you can build an application using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and really have a you know, write once, run anywhere type of application. So just as an example, Visual Studio Code is actually uh, is built using Electron. And they do have uh, native support now for uh, the M1 processor. So if you're building applications using Electron, there's a lot of applications out there that are built in Electron. Uh, it is, uh, so they officially support the M1 processor. So that brings us to virtualization. So uh, if you are using something like VMware Fusion, as an example, right now uh, VMware has said that they're committed to supporting um, uh, VMware Fusion f uh, for the Mac so that it runs on uh, the M1 processor. But uh, as far as I can tell, they haven't done any previews or betas or anything like that for people to start using. So if you're dependent on VMware Fusion, uh, they still do not have a story for the M1 processor. But if you're using Parallels, uh, they just came out as of uh, yesterday with uh, Parallels Desktop 16.5 for the Mac, and it supports both Intel and the M1 processor. So if you need to be able to do virtualization, in other words, you need to be able to run a full-on operating system with its GUI, um, uh, you can do that now using uh, Parallels. And I believe this is set up so that this is actual virtualization, not emulation. So uh, if you're gonna run this, uh, if you're gonna run an operating system, it has to be uh, an ARM-based version of that operating system. So. There is an ARM version of uh, Windows, and there's a bunch of different uh, distributions of Linux that run on ARM. So uh, feel free, if, if you want to be able to do that, uh, you can either do that with using uh, uh, Docker, or you can run those, uh, uh, those Linux distros uh, using uh, Parallels. There's also a new tool here uh, I'm not that familiar with called UTM, 
and this appears to be a uh, a way that you can actually run uh, different uh, operating systems using the hypervisor. Uh, I just saw this today. I haven't had a chance to play around with this. This looks extraordinarily cool. Uh, but my understanding is this is based off of uh, KeyMU, which is an open source uh, uh, tool for running uh, virtualized operating systems uh, on your on your system. So uh, that all looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, so uh, when Apple actually does put those uh, iMacs uh, on the market, I'm planning on uh, buying one. So I hope this helps you if you're looking to you know, uh, invest in a uh, new M1-based uh, Apple Silicon Mac. Um, uh, the support's gotten a lot better since their introduction for, for developers and software engineers. Um, so I feel like the support's good enough for me uh, at this point to where uh, I can uh, I can at least get it for for a home machine and maybe start helping out with some of these different projects. Uh, the only thing that I'm kind of concerned about since I do a lot of mobile development is uh, the support now uh, for Android is still looks like it's kind of like still in the preview state. Uh, so I'm hoping that. Uh, that Google will update the tools now, uh, especially since uh, Android Studio is based off of uh, uh, JetBrains IDE. Um, as far as you know, that I mean, it's not doesn't concern me as much as the emulators. Uh, the emulators seem to be the thing that's required like a lot of work um, for the different Android emulators. But if you're not doing Android development, that may not be a problem. Um, but uh, I'm looking to start playing around with it. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up uh, so I can make more videos like this. Um, if you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down, but please give it a thumbs up anyways. And subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm gonna be, I do uh, a lot of videos around, not so much on the, the Mac, but uh, around polyglot uh, engineering. The name of the channel is the Polyglot Engineer Channel. And I kind of cover topics for uh, software engineers that may be going from one language to another language and uh, uh, that's kind of the focus of this channel. So if you like it, please subscribe. Uh, with that, please have a good day, and I'll see you again later.